Welcome to Weather Extra on CBS News Bay Area. I'm KPIX 5 meteorologist Paul Hagen. Every week we're covering a different weather topic, a deeper dive than what we can do within the confines of our daily weather cast on KPIX. And this week, because it's top of mind for everybody, we're going to be talking about extreme heat as we go through this extraordinary heat wave that is gripping the Bay Area. Full disclosure, when I'm referencing different time frames, I'm recording this on Monday evening in the wake of record high temperatures across the Bay Area and with more record high temperatures temperatures likely as we head through the rest of this week. But that's not where the drama ends. We look ahead to the weekend. First of all, let's talk about the big picture pattern. We've been referencing this heat dome building and taking over the western half of the country. We always look at the weather maps from this kind of two-dimensional perspective where we're looking from the space view down towards Earth. But to understand what's happening with this kind of weather pattern, need to flip the map a little bit and look at it in three dimensions because the atmosphere is three dimensional. It's a thin envelope of gas that surrounds the planet, but it's anywhere from six to 10 miles deep, the part of the atmosphere where our weather happens. And a lot can happen within that six to 10 miles. So we're looking at the side view here and a heat dome is an area of high pressure in the upper levels of the atmosphere. It just means there is more atmosphere on top of us and the weight of the atmosphere exerting higher pressure on us at ground level. Now the air, because it's piling up over us, it can't just sit there. It tries to even out a little bit. The atmosphere tries to even things out. So some of that air is going to spread out side to side, but some of it is going to sink down towards ground level, pushed down from above by, again, the weight of the air on top of it. As that air gets pushed down towards the ground, it compresses the air that's already at ground level. And that air at ground level is already hot. We're in a hot time of year, but that further compressional warming is what sends us into these extreme heat patterns with record high temperatures Likely, as we head through the rest of this week, this is very similar to patterns that we've seen before. Most recently, just a couple of years ago, we had a lot of record high temperatures around Labor Day weekend of 2020. The features of this pattern, not just the extreme heat, but also stagnant air, because that sinking air overhead traps anything at ground level, this tends to lead to ground level pollution being trapped, whether it's urban pollution, smog, or whether it's smoke from any wildfires around the area. And it tends to be a very persistent weather pattern where it just gets stuck in place. It's hard to get these areas of strong high pressure to break down. Eventually it happens, but they usually linger longer than we would like them to. So when we're looking at what the impact of this is, let's keep in mind that heat waves have always happened, but they're getting hotter and hotter. Summertime temperatures, and even though we're in September now, meteorological autumn, it is still technically summertime, and summer has been getting warmer across almost the entire country, but especially in the western United States, including in the Bay Area. When you look at the number of warmer than average summertime days in San Francisco over the past several decades, we've seen an increase of almost four weeks worth of above normal temperatures. But it's not just the fact that we're seeing more above normal days, it's how the distribution of temperatures gets shifted as the climate has been changing. So if you think of the normal way the temperatures are spread out without the influence of climate change, you have some cold snaps, you have some heat waves, they tend to balance each other out and most of the time we're in the middle within 10 degrees on either side of average. But with the impact of climate change, it increases the average temperature, which shifts the entire distribution. We get fewer cold snaps that generally aren't as severe. We get more heat events and we bring in the tail on that distribution, more extreme heat events. So not only are the heat waves more frequent, they're more intense and they tend to be more persistent. They stick around even longer. That's the reality that we're facing and the numbers bear it out. If you look at the number of records, comparing the cold temperature records to the hot temperature records set by decade, going back to the 1940s, well, they used to be almost exactly in balance. That gets way out of whack over the past few decades where we're vastly outpacing the number of cold temperature records set in San Francisco by the number of hot temperature records. And that is the case that we saw for Labor Day. Again, I'm recording this on Monday evening with temperatures at least within five degrees of a record in San Francisco, but records set for Oakland, San Jose, Redwood City, Santa Rosa, Livermore, Concord, Fairfield set a record high temperature. Some locations set their all time record high temperatures, not just for one particular day, but any day of the year at some of these observation points. So this has been an extraordinary heat wave and there's the potential for more consequences farther down the line. If you think back to my last weather extra segment, I talked about the general setup for dry lightning events. Go back and watch that one if you haven't seen it, but I'll kind of summarize it quickly. One of the antecedent characteristics that we look for is a strong area of high pressure, a heat dome in place to boost temperatures at ground level, which 
if any showers or thunderstorms would eventually get going, would help to evaporate any rain on the way down. It's not the only feature that we look for. Look for some kind of ripple in the atmosphere off the coast that helps to boost the flow of moisture up across California. You need all these things to come together. Why do I reference this? Well, because we are tracking a tropical system, Hurricane K, in the Pacific. Now, this is way, way, way down to our south as I'm recording this on Monday evening. The problem is the potential for the system to get close enough to us to become troublesome. The forecast path from the National Hurricane Center tracks it up along the coast of Baja, California, before curving it farther out to the west. Okay, that's still a long way away from us. But let's switch over to a view that simulates the amount of moisture in the atmosphere. That shows very clearly where that tropical system is, where its remnants could potentially go, enough of that moisture sneaking up over the Bay Area that it would be the fuel for any showers or thunderstorms that would likely bring a dry lightning threat. And when you get a dry lightning threat into very dry fire fuels, once this heat wave is over, we're going to be looking at record dryness of all the fire fuels around the Bay Area, the vegetation. That's a bad combination, but you need all those ingredients to come together exactly right. Hot temperatures near the ground, that mid-level atmospheric moisture, some kind of trigger to get things going, and atmospheric instability. Now, all these factors may be present, but they have to be present at the same time to come together exactly right to give us that significant dry lightning threat. Is that going to happen? Too soon to tell at this point, because the ingredients we're talking about coming towards us, it's still six or seven days down the line. It's a long time from now in forecasting terms. But again, from our perspective, as I record this on Monday evening, it's enough of a concern that we want to make sure we outline the possibility that we could be looking at a dry lightning threat farther down the line. In fact, looks like our storm chances are going to be increasing by Sunday, but especially Sunday night into Monday. That second full week of September could bring us, while no more record high temperatures, the record highs that we have this week being replaced by that dry thunderstorm threat. It's lower than a 50-50 chance, but it's far higher of a chance than we would like to see, especially in the wake of these record high temperatures that we are enduring for the rest of this week. We'll keep you updated day by day on the forecast. That's the big picture perspective along with the next potential threat. We're always looking for ideas for these segments as well. So if you have a weather or climate question, you can email it to us. Just email weatherextra at kpix.cbs.com.